always had two vicious stepmothers, Turkey and Greece, but no real mother, said recently a native Greek Christian inhabitant of uh, Imros, Gökçeada, one of the two islands in the Turkish side of the Aegean, uh, which uh, is populated almost exclusively by, uh, by the Rum, or those Christians, until recently. In contrast to the rather traditional reference to motherhood, particularly regarding stepmothers, this metaphor actually offers a non-essentialist view of room presence under Ottoman and then Turkish rule. The room of this geography were indeed a mixture that defied um, easy associations with a rigid understanding of Greekness or Turkishness, questioning at the same time the supposedly unitary or homogeneous nature of these traditions. What exactly constituted that mixture, what the characteristics of that mixture were, however, requires further explanation. Um, scholarship on cosmopolitanism uh, tends to focus on relations between communities, um, groups, or classes. And it's my aim um, in this paper to focus rather on um, individuals to trace that mixed state of being or their trans um, characteristic, so to speak. Um, using the linguistic space as an arena reflecting and reproducing social realities, this examination focuses on the diverse ways in which Greek and or Orthodox personal names were registered in Ottoman documents. Through a comparative analysis of Ottoman and archival records, um, this paper traces the impact of the Greek element in the Ottoman space and the Ottoman transformation of that Greekness. By Greek names, I mean Orthodox Christian names and ancient Greek names. Um, and um, what, what I will talk about here is, um, is not a specific time period, uh, but it's something that is observed throughout the Ottoman centuries. Most of my examples, though, will be um, from the 19th century, from the 19th and early 20th centuries. And um, at the end of the paper, I will try to make a few um, suggestions about continuity and also possible changes um, throughout different time periods. So um, here's what happened when uh, Ottoman scribes encountered Greek names. What was a very common practice with Orthodox Christian and ancient Greek names in Ottoman documents was to record them in their vocative or diminutive form. So vocative, that's... Um, Um, vocative, that's uh, meaning the uh, form the Greek language uses when someone is called. So uh, the name in the nom nominative is, um, is Yorgos, uh, and the Greek language declines personal names. So just like they change, just like these names change in the, in the accusative and dative, they change in the vocative form as well. So Yorgos, the, the, the proper name uh, of the name becomes um, Yorgo. Hence, in Ottoman documents, the name uh, most commonly is, is Yorgo or, or Costa. Uh, which is um, rather than um, Yorgos or Kostas, which is their um, regular nominative form. Likewise, Socrates or um, Aleko uh, for, for ancient Greek names. Um, the second form is, um, is the diminutive, um, which is also very common for the Ottoman scribe uh, to write these names in their diminutive form. The grammatical form in the Greek language, which denotes affinity and closeness, um, likewise the informal form of a name, so Yorgaki or Kostaki, but it's also something that um, the Greek language uses um, very commonly for other, for other objects as well, so it's not something um, confined to personal names. Um, with regard to female names, uh, a similar practice is observed, uh, as in one uh, and two, uh, vocative and diminutive, um, at least must have been in place for one and two, uh, it's, but it's not apparent for, for the vocative because it's um, usually the female name doesn't really change um, or decline um, in the vocative form usually, so Maria remains Maria for example. But the diminutive form is also commonly used for women. Uh, for example, Eleni becomes um, Elenicha. So we know that the Ottoman scribes did it for female names, but um, at least for the vocative um, I believe it's not apparent because of grammatical reasons. Um, so, it, these two forms, one and two, were the most pervasive forms that the Ottomans used in recording a Greek name, but it's also possible to talk about a number of other practices, um, such as um, pronunciation and addition. Um, 
um, so the addition usually involved um, the um, addition of a, of a vowel. So strati, for example, uh, becomes istrati. Uh, and fourthly, um, subtraction. Um, uh, Ottoman documents cut away the declension suffix of the name. Uh, so suffixes like os or us that appear at the end of a name and is necessary in the Greek language to decline the name, usually it does not appear in Ottoman documents. So hence, uh, haralambos becomes um, haralam and not, um, and not haralambe, which would be vocative. So that's, that's something different from the vocative. Likewise, apostolos becomes apostol and not apostole, the vocative. Um, and, and, uh, and, and number five is um, a combination of the above, uh, like Yuvan um, for Ioannis, or uh, Athanas uh, for, um, for Athanasios or Athanasis. Uh, so this is according to both pronunciation, um, the third one, and also subtraction, uh, the fourth one. Um, so um, let us br uh, look at what um, this might mean. Um, for one and two, the vocative and the diminutive, um, Ottoman documents were putting down on paper what they heard. And as one and two were the most common forms, Greeks were known in the Ottoman world officially through the unofficial, informal, and oral forms of their names. So Ottomans basically adopted an informal Greek. That the Ottoman um, administration was putting down in writing a whole world of orality of the Ottoman Greek world is supported by the fact that they tended to write the names of bishops in their correct formal form with the os and us suffix. Um, so Here's an example, uh, on, on the second line, um, um, uh, uh, Patrick Theof Theophios. Um, because, um, you, um, or just let me give you another example as well here, uh, from the Ottoman document itself, Kadikyoyu uh, Metropoliti Kalinikos, um, the Metropolitan Bishop of, uh, of Halkedon um, Kalinikos, with the, with the proper um, uh, S at the end. Um, because I, uh, I would say bishops were usually not addressed by their names, so no one really heard their names. And this may be the only exception, the calling of the bishops might be the only exception to the cross-cutting nature of the vocative and diminutive usage with respect to profession or status. So, um, so otherwise, vocative and diminutive applies to both upper-class people, intellectuals, uh, merchants, lawyers, as well as peasants and, and tavern keepers, um, so it cross-cuts um, professional or, or status um, other than um, bishops. Um, so um, one and two were the most common forms, but we also have types three, four, and five, where scribes did not only or necessarily put down on paper what they heard, but they made additional changes in these names. So they, um, sometimes they shorten it by cutting away the declension suffix or shortening in a more arbitrary manner. In other words, they cut or broke the names in various forms. Um, so even though these changes, three, four, and five, were not exactly a result of what they heard, they were still rooted in some way um, pronunciation and the informal world. Uh, so this suggests two mechanisms at work. On the one hand, it seems to be a, a practical matter uh, to put the names in a more quote-unquote manageable form, shorter, easier. Um, this is what the Greek language itself does. So people are rarely uh, Constantinos, but mostly Kostas in writing as well. So um, the Ottomans uh, probably just took this practice to a rather extreme form, uh, an acute form specifying, pinning down, formalizing, uh, and in a way identifying barriers of these names as such and also Ottomanize these names along the way. But other than such practical concerns, the emphasis on informality and orality, as well as breaking and tempering with names, suggests other ideological motives of otherization, as has been examined elsewhere by um, Nejwa al kaptan regarding Christian and Jewish titles and patronyms, uh, though she doesn't really work on personal names. Um, so this, this might also be um, a, a comparative um, um, research uh, with regard to how Ottomans uh, actually um, uh, dealt with these names. Uh, through, through this process, um, this whole process, um, I, would, I would say, um, as a result, these names are no longer Greek proper, 
but rather Ottomanized or Turkified. But at the same time, they're not really Turkish either, because they're, after all, not a Turkish name. Um, and I say this in the context that uh, Ottoman documents actually use um, Greek terms. Um, uh, in, in Ottoman um, um, scribes use um, Greek terms uh, in Ottoman documents. Uh, even though, um, uh, I mean, there's an Ottoman equivalent of that, and they sometimes use um, both the Greek and the Ottoman version simultaneously. For example, you can see Silog, uh, uh, likewise Jemiet, for association. So it's not actually mutually, uh, mutually exclusive. Um, having said that, however, I mean, this, this practical concern, um, uh, I would hasten to add that these new names which these people have been transformed into do not necessarily denote an equal relationship, but a relationship that bears the impact of the Ottoman diminution in a sense, um, uh, drawing on from, um, from rather this emphasis on orality. So what about the people themselves? How did the uh, people um, the, um, th themselves refer, uh, um, um, uh, I mean, name themselves? So um, we see that they adopted these names uh, and or used them interchangeably with proper Greek version of their names. So using different versions of their names, Ottoman or, or Greek, um, were not mutually exclusive and neither in the same um, document or context. Um, some of the usual criteria, such as literacy, the languages they knew, the cultural linguistic world they in inhabited in general, or the linguistic cultural world they inhabited on a more temporary basis, um, and need to be um, um, considered in explaining how these names were written. Uh, and this has also been um, studied by Etemel Dam regarding signatures in Ottoman um, bank documents. Um, so, so, the, so the issue of um, literacy and literacy in the Greek language is an important element. Um, because after all, this is a grammatical issue. Yet here, um, I mean, drawing on from evidence from the archives, here are some of our assumptions, usual assumptions, with regard to um, these criteria, you know, the higher the, the literacy, the, the, um, the more the usage of um, the correct form, are contested, suggesting a wide adoption of Ottomanized names. So I will um, just give uh, some examples on that. Um, so the first example is, um, uh, is uh, from, the, from the 19th um, century, um, where indeed um, there were those who wrote the correct form uh, of their names. Um, so here, uh, Ioannis Halikopoulos, um, that's um, uh, um, the, the correct um, um, form of Greek um, uh, at the bottom and, the, and, and, and at the top, um, it's uh, Ioannis um, um, Halikopoulos. Uh, the name, um, the personal name is written with an S, so it's the, it's the correct version, but still um, the surname is, is without the S and it's also changed into um, a Yuan. So, um, this is uh, one of the rare examples where we see the addition of the S, so, it's to, so, the, so the, um, the S isn't totally excluded from Ottoman documents, um, the, the correct um, Greek version, um, but, um, and, and sometimes it actually appears uh, together with, um, with the uh, Ottomanized version, so in, in one document it's possible to see both Yanis and Yani next to one another uh, in, the same, in the same sentence. Um, so another example uh, from um, from a group petition uh, from Anatolia again from the from the early 20th um, century. So in this group petition, um, uh, there, there were those um, who, who signed their names in the in the proper Greek form, uh, but also those who um, used um, the Ottomanized version, like Ioanni Bachavani, Stavi Dimitri Orgaki. Uh, Ioannis Kaplani, Yanakos Kriti, Andon Teleci. So there are also, um, in, the second, in the second line there, it's also clearly not the 19th century standardized um, um, Greek either. Um, um, when we look at um, Turkish written with um, Greek characters, so the so-called um, Karamanlı documents, um, in published material, Suggesting standardization, we see a tendency for the correct nominative form of names, 
Um, although these names, these texts are themselves in Turkish, but they but they use the correct um, Greek version, um, such as um, here in this one, uh, Dimitrios or Ioannis, but likewise we see Vasilaki and Petraki or Lazaraki uh, without the S, uh, and uh, and the usage of um, the diminutive. Um, and a personal name in a list. Um, so, so this is this is a list at, that appears at the end of a book. And um, um, so here they 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 have a bigger tendency um, to write their names um, in the Ottomanized version. But in the text itself, where we see sentences, even though the text itself is in Turkish, uh, there is um, a, a tendency to use the more standardized form. And uh, and. A personal name in a list, as opposed to a personal name in a sentence, clearly reflects more about how that person was known as, and in, and in such lists we also see autonized usage. Nevertheless, things get more ambiguous when we look at handwritten communal registry books, Turkish writing with um, Greek characters, but not in published materials. So that's um, examples from communal um, registry books, we see a great deal of usage of um, the Ottomanized version, um, such as um, Kiryakidi, uh, Kiryakidi dan alınan vergi, so the tax um, 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 from uh, Kiryakidi or Yuvan A. But we also see um, the, the correct, um, the, um, the, the Ottomanized, um, uh, the, the, um, the proper Greek form as well, Kiryakidis, in the same document, but, uh, but in unpublished um, handwritten communal registry books, there is, um, there is um, we see a lot of um, um, auto, uh, uh, names in Ottomanized version. Mm. And uh, we have um, further examples for the use of the Ottomanized version of names in Greek documents written in Greek, both published and handwritten, showing that this was not a phenomenon confined to Turkish speakers or Ottoman documents. For example, uh, Vasilakis Ioannidis, the architect of the church of uh, Ayatriada in, in Taksim in Istanbul, just appears as, as Vasilakis Ioannidis um, in the diminutive form. So to conclude, um, what we have at hand is a reality that comes out um, as a specific merging of Ottoman and Greek languages over Greek personal names. The Ottoman administrators tampered with these names, producing an in-between reality, while the people themselves adopted these names. Those who knew otherwise did not totally exclude, exclude the Ottomanized version of their names. Yet this mixed state of being occurred through a, a largely unequal relationship whereby the Ottomans informalized the people through their names regardless of social class and status. This practice has been going on for a long time throughout the Ottoman centuries, and it is still the case today. So there's much continuity with respect to such informalizing practices. Um, yet since this has been going on for such a long time, it's also difficult to speak of this action of, of, of playing with or tempering with these names being out there constantly. So these names are simply the names of the people um, ha have become the names of the people unless they know otherwise. And those who begin to know otherwise um, increase in numbers with the rise of literacy and education in Greek um, in the 19th century. And uh, in this case, more and more people can and do use both uh, in the late Ottoman period. And so they inhabit um, two different um, linguistic and cultural worlds, um, sometimes simultaneously, or, or they have them in their, in their own person and change according to context. Um, so I just would like to um, just finish with um, a couple of um, uh, open um, research um, uh, questions. Um, this issue clearly needs to be contextualized further with respect to how the Ottoman world handled other parts of the non-Muslim population and also characteristics of the Ottoman scribal system and methods of documentation, specifically the practice of simultaneous use of different names for one entity, su such as the use of Istanbul, Kostandiniya, and Darsadet in one document without any r rhyme or reason. It also needs to be contextualized and questioned with respect to the notion of a correct form of Greek, 
uh, particularly with respect to transition to a written standardization in the 19th century. So we also need to question that um, correct form of Greek, and particularly the examples we have seen with respect to um, the unstandardized um, forms that, that, that they use. Um, and also with regard to different versions of Greek spoken in different parts of the empire. Thank you. Thank you.